Good morning boys and girls and happy Sabbath. Welcome to this week's online children's Sabbath school. We are really happy that you have again decided to spend some time with us on this Sabbath morning. Now, I hope that you are well and that all your loved ones are well as well. Well, we're going to continue off from last week's program now. Can anyone tell me who our story was about last week? Anybody? Yes, it was about Queen Esther. We learned about how exactly she became queen now. There's more to her story. And that's where we're going to pick up from this week. So stay tuned, boys and girls, and pay attention. And God is going to bless you richly. Let's begin with a word of prayer. I'm a great big bundle of pretend 
Hi, boys and girls. I'm Uncle Karen, and I'm a geologist. Do you know what that means? Well, it means that I'm a scientist who studies the Earth. And sometimes that includes rocks like this. And these rocks can give us lots of information. We just have to look very closely. So what can you observe when you look at this rock? What color is it? Well, do you notice all of these holes in it? What kind of place do you think a rock like this formed in? Hmm. This rock is special. It actually formed in a place that is extremely hot. Can you guess where? That's right, it's actually a volcano. Now, you might think of volcanoes as big, scary things. And yes, when volcanoes erupt, they can send lava, hot lava, flying up into the sky or flowing out over the land. And these volcanic eruptions sometimes can be very, very deadly. But that's not all that volcanoes do. Volcanoes don't just destroy, but they actually create. They create new rocks like this. And from these rocks, we get some of the best soils for growing food. So volcanic soils are among the richest, most productive soils anywhere on our planet. They also make new islands like many of the islands in the Caribbean, where we're from. Those islands started as volcanoes and we kept erupting all of this hot molten rock like this stuff called lava. And that lava cools down, it solidifies, which means it turns into something nice and hard. And that hard thing is a volcanic rock. So volcanoes are pretty useful. They're also tourist attractions, like this volcano that's erupting in Iceland. It actually is attracting people from everywhere who want to see this spectacular lava show. And volcanoes don't just stop there. Volcanoes are actually places where we can get clean energy. This magma, which is lava when it's below the surface, is very hot. And that hot magma can boil water to make steam. And we can use that steam to create clean electricity that we can use to light up light bulbs or power our appliances like televisions or refrigerators or washing machines. So last but not least, one more interesting fact about volcanoes. Do you know that we can also find precious gems like diamonds in volcanic rocks? Pretty awesome. There's a lesson in this for us. Sometimes when bad things happen, we might feel like God is angry at us. And that anger, those bad experiences can feel like hot lava. But just like volcanoes, God wants us to make something out of these bad experiences. He lets us go through these things because he wants to bring about something better in our lives. And just like volcanoes can make very rich soils, God uses those tough times in your life to make something better for you. So the next time you feel like you're going through something that is really tough, just remember, that volcanoes, they also make diamonds. Bye. See you next time. Pleasant Sabbath, everyone. Today I am here to share my perspective of what charity is and the importance of being charitable. Charity to me is the voluntary giving of help to those in need. 
It is important to be charitable so that we may provide assistance to the less fortunate in our society. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of our parents and guardians have suffered job losses or even salary deductions. To help households like these, we can donate food items or even do a hamper drive. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity never fails. Thank you and do have a wonderful Sabbath. Your name? Esther. Esther. I take you for my queen. Oh. I never thought I would see Vashti's equal, but this one is even more beautiful. <laughs> Ah, uh, <clears throat> Now, uh, as you know, I've had a few problems keeping queens on the throne. I give them everything gold can buy, and pretty soon they're ordering me around. From now on, the queen will learn obedience. Rule number one. When I call, you come. Oh, it will be my pleasure to... Number two. Don't speak until you're spoken to. And number three... Never approach me unless I call for you, or I'll have you killed. Understand? You are my king. My life will be to serve you. Now we're getting somewhere. You may return to your room. Mordecai! Mordecai! I have to see the king! You can't, does he? No one... He stole my daughter! My only child. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Dazim. It would be foolish for you to enter the palace. But let me... No! <gasps> Dazim, wait! Dazim? No, Dazim, wait! Oh, oh! Where is she? Where is my daughter? Who are you? You have no right to take her. She's mine. How dare you enter this court? Death. What are you doing here? What sort of tricks are you up to? You must not have heard about my new position. The king has ordered all to bow when I approach. I bow down to no one but my god. Oh! You are not in Israel, Mordecai. This is Persia. In Persia, I am god. Bow down!
dear queen, it's all right by me, you understand, but I don't think the king would like this. We can't very well let them starve. What is this? What's going on here? These people are hungry. Get them out of here. Now! I'm sorry. The palace kitchen is no place for beggars. May I speak, dear king? If you must. If the poor cannot come here, may I take the food to them? So much goes to waste here in the palace. You may have someone else take it, but it is not becoming of the queen to be tramping around the kingdom with a bag full of garbage. Thank you. You are kind. Mm. Oh. All my honor, all my riches are worth nothing if Mordecai will not bow to me. He's just one man, Haman. The Hebrews are all the same. They worship their own God, their own laws. You are second in command. Do something about it. What? What? Our prisons can't hold them all. Then kill them. Uh, the king would never permit it. Refusing to honor the king is treason. The punishment for treason is death. I'm sure that's how the king will see it. Here, let me take those. This isn't work for a queen. The king will be mad. Nonsense. It's too heavy for you. You are so kind, Queen Esther. The palace is a different place with you here. Oh, what a nice thing to say. Thank you. The Hebrews are plotting to overthrow your kingdom. It's true! The gatekeeper, Mordecai, allows spies to enter. Jews fill the palace. What? The situation is desperate, sir. Your kingdom is in danger. Ah! After all I've done for them? Traitors! Have their leaders killed? All of them! There's no time to search out the leaders. Make a decree. On the 13th day of the 12th month, every Hebrew, old and young, mother and child, shall be put to death! I give you full power. Do it! How could he do this? Mordecai says Haman's the one behind it. What else did my father say? Tell me everything. I... That was all. Tell me. <sighs> he says you must go to the king and reveal yourself as a Jew. You mustn't pay attention to him. He was mad with rage. He, he doesn't know how dangerous it is. Go, find my father, and tell him to gather all the Jews together and to fast and pray for me. We will not eat or drink for three days. Then I will go to the king and beg for the lives of our people. Esther, you can't go to him. You'll be killed. If... I perish. I perish.
to come. I had to. I could never harm you, Esther. You are so... What is it you want? Name it. I'll give you anything. I... What is it? I have a favor to ask of you. Allow me to hold a banquet in your honor. I I'll ask you then. I would be pleased if Haman would come as well. The pleasure is ours. A banquet in my honor, held by the queen herself. <laughs> First, I'll get these Hebrews out of the way. Then, I'll play the role of the king's loyal advisor. And before he knows what's happened, I... I will be king. I built a gallows fifty cubits high. We'll hang their leaders first. Good. Good. I'll need the entire army. It's yours. Let the whole world see how Xerxes deals with traitors. Ah, Esther. It was a fine banquet. Come, sit. I'm anxious to know your wish. Shall Haman stay? Something troubles you, Esther. What is it? Ask for anything you want. My kingdom is yours for the asking. I don't wish for your kingdom. All I want is my life. Esther, you have no need to fear for your life. You are wrong, dear king. I am condemned to die. And all my people, too. What? Who would dare? Show me the man, and I'll cut him to pieces. It is Haman. My queen, I never... You? I am a Jew. I have not meant you any harm, nor have my people, nor has Mordecai who raised me. All we want is to worship our God in peace. You said... She is a Jew, Xerxes. You cannot listen to her. She... She wants the kingdom for herself. You lie, Haman. There has never been a kinder soul than Esther. No. No, Xerxes. Think about what you're doing. You will be hanged with the rope you intended for Mordecai's neck. This week's lesson is entitled, Hosanna. Jesus and his disciples were on their way to Jerusalem when he told two of them to go and get a young donkey that no one had ever ridden. He told them to untie and bring the young donkey they will see as they enter the village to him. Huh? I could imagine that is what the two disciples must have thought. After all, whatever donkey they found wouldn't be his or theirs. They must have forgotten for a moment that it was Jesus who created all things and that a cattle on a thousand hills belonged to him. 
But just as they were wondering about his command, Jesus told them that if anyone asked what they were doing, to tell them the Lord needs it and will send it back shortly. You know what? It happened exactly as Jesus said. When they, f they went and found the, the young donkey, and as they were untying it, people standing there asked what they were doing, but they were allowed to take it when the disciples told them that the Lord needed it. Amazing! Jesus was following the Jewish custom for a royal century since young donkeys were ridden by kings of Israel past. Jesus did that, not because he wanted to be king for a day, but because he had to fulfill the prophecy that the people also knew about him, that the Messiah would show himself to the people of Jerusalem and he would be riding a young donkey. As he entered Jerusalem, the people started shouting together with the disciples, lay their coats on the path before him and shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a scene that must have been, an all the time kind of street party with people shouting and waving palm branches and singing Hosanna, a cry of praise to God. That, at that time, people had come to Jerusalem from near and far to celebrate the Passover, and it was a great opportunity for people to come to know Jesus, the Messiah. But also in the crowd were people who had known Jesus who were touched by him and healed of their diseases. But among that celebratory crowd, there were Jewish leaders who were not pleased because they were jealous of Jesus and wanted the praise that he was getting. They tried to quiet the people, but Jesus answered them and said, if they keep quiet, the rocks will cry out. In other words, it was good and right to praise the God. Don't let anybody stop your praise because Jesus is worthy to be praised. The memory verse is, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. John 12, 13. So we have come to the end of this week's online program. I hope that you had as much fun as I did and I pray that you were blessed. You know, boys and girls, we can all be as brave as Queen Esther and we can stand up for what is right and we can remember that God hears and answers our prayers. I hope that you've remembered this week and the weeks before to spend time with God, your friend. And you can tell him anything. And like I said before, he hears and he always answers. So I pray that God blesses you and that you have a great week ahead. Let's end with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the time that we've been able to share. I pray that you would bless us, O Lord, and that you'd help us to stand for you, to be brave for you, and help us to remember that we can always talk to you. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.